we this morning? That's right. Too blessed to be stressed. Amen. I'm waiting for my partner in crime to make it on up here. All righty. So now we can start. You don't got to wait on me. Oh, here we go with the crackling. You got this. Oh, I know. I just enjoy having you by my side. Huh? I appreciate that. No problem. Well, like my lovely wife said, I'm sorry I missed it. I said good morning. I say good morning. I say good morning. Is anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Is anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. That's what I'm to see. I love me some D. I love me some D. So I want to say good morning to everybody once again. And we got a few announcements. Yes, we do. Well, today, if you didn't know, when you were walking through the church this morning with all the beautiful trees and lights and spectacular, they're singing. We have people singing. Yeah. We have games out there. They're selling tamales. What? Oh, my God. So it is the all-church Christmas party. Woo! So you yeah. can go out after service, play a few games, get you a little plate of tamales with beans and rice. And it's $7, two tamales, side of beans, side of the rice. Here's good. They are pork tamales, just so you know. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on? We have a couple of other things. Oh, we have the gala. I hear that the women, Extraordinary Women's Christmas Gala is going to be spectacular. Spectacular this Amen. Year. Amen. And, is, and also, any fellas, any of my brothers, we do need help. We need about 30 brothers to help out and serve. So please, um, if you can, it is the when eighth. it's the eighth, the eighth at five o'clock. Woo, look at that. That's the Feels good. That's Dr. Fleming right there, y'all. If y'all don't know who that man is right there. <laughs> so and that's a blessing right there. Fills me up with joy. You know. I'm trying to still follow in his footsteps up here right now. This is the original man that had this mic up here. So I'm happy to see my brother here today. So if you can help, please see me or anybody else of the staff so we can get you signed up as well. All right. Again, the gala for the ladies that are coming will start at 7 p.m. That is December 8th. That will be here at the church. It is $22 and it's limited seating. So you can purchase their tickets at the extraordinary sisters.com or you'll see Pastor Dion in the front after service. She has a beautiful table with butterflies and all pretty decorations. You can purchase your tickets there. We also have fun times with the kids. Pictures with Santa. Pics with Santa. That is on the 9th of December at 5 p.m excuse me, before and after the 5 p.m. service. And then we have it, uh, that will be Saturday, and then Sunday that is going to be before the 9.15 and before the 11, and then after also. So pictures with Santa, so get the kiddos' hair all did and outfits all matching and, you know, come out and have some fun with us. Scrooge. Scrooge, I can't wait. This I wait three hundred and six. Uh, I wait three hundred and sixty-five days to come see this play. I love this play, like every year. It's always amazing. It's always fun. It's it's different. This it's different. It's, it's always, always different. It's always amazing. And you don't get to see it not once, not twice, but they're showing it. Well, it's three different days, but multiple times. Multiple times. So we have the 13th. About five or six <laughs> yes. times. We have the 13th. That's what I'm talking about. The 16th and the 17th. So if you miss the 13th and the 16th, which is a Wednesday and a Saturday, Sunday you can catch it because it's at 8 a.m., 9, 15, 11, 12, 35, and 5 p.m. So you can go get a snack and come back. You That's can go what I'm get talking about. Come back. We got so. some amazing people starring in the show too. Oh, I know. Like, I mean, 
they they originally, you know, I think they had like Will Smith in them. They was actually supposed to be there, but we had somebody that was even better. With a higher pay. So we you was like, I mean? we need them in our we lives. We need them. So we Will got was Dean like, and Gary. We got Dean and Gary up in the building that's going to be there. They out trumped the Smiths. Look they, at that. You know what I mean? They was, like, they was like, Jada and Will, they was like, nah, we cool. Nah, we we we, we can't nah. out we can't out Smith yeah. the Bolzanis. Nah, you know, so we got our own superstars that we right. wanted to have come up and do their thing. So we tell them no. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's so that's that's how we roll. Today we got to have us a fantastic word. What did we have something else, babe? No, I was just gonna say if you didn't catch any of the announcements, we have them all in this lovely flyer. You can fly at the information counter, or you can go online too. Yes, you sure can. You can go online and find everything. Oh, a reminder, we will not have service on the 25th. 24th. No, I got the 25th. Say the flyer. Oh, the 25th? Yeah, Chris Candlelight service you didn't mention. Oh, yeah, Please. I didn't mention that. All right, That's why. to the 29th of December, so we will not have services that uh, lovely time. We're going to honor Christmas and enjoy the time with our families. I'm talking about class. Y- yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. The whole building is shut down. Oh, the whole building is okay. shut down. Okay. So today we got we got a powerful word this morning. If y'all don't know, it's it's about labels. So I know I have if if I put all the labels on my body, I'd probably be covered up because I think I got so many labels. I'm crazy, you know, but I got issues. So but and my issues got issues too sometimes. Will you agree with that, baby? I'm tired. Yeah, All right, so it's, we're it's a whole lot. Uh, and we're going to bring up this fantastic couple, our brothers and sisters in Christ. They got our back from the beginning to the end. And we simply try to duplicate what they do. we trying to, when we grow up, we want to be like those goings. <laughs> What's goings on in the building today? Right. So bring them up. Let's give them a round of applause for Roberta and Kenyatta. Good morning, everyone. Man, I'm crying already. Today's awesome. Woo, praise God. It's a powerful day. Boy, that's some, uh, that's some hard Man. introductions to, to live up towards. Shoot. You know, I, I don't know. No I just got to let God do it. <laughs> How many love our church? Oh, I love my church. Oh, Woo. my goodness. Living Word Bible Church is so awesome. We got so many things going on. Uh, if you're listening to us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Periscope, oh, YouTube, uh, whatever scope you want to be on, <laughs> we, we appreciate you listening in, but we also invite you to Living Word Bible Church each and every Sunday for great service, great classes. We're right here in Mesa, Arizona. Come on down and visit us because you get more out of it when you come here. And Pastor Amen. Jason and Pastor Scott, they're doing a thing called, uh, what are they teaching on right now? Right now. It's the uh, new one. Oh. I wouldn't go. Manger. Manger things. Yeah. See, I was, was trying to get her. I was trying to trigger her. <laughs> I may okay. remember that sermon. Shoot. Triggers. Manger things are being taught over here. So you don't want to miss that either. There's so much good stuff going on over here. But we welcome you either way. We'll take you as you are. Just come on and see us. Uh, I'm Pastor G. This is my beautiful wife, Roberta. Good morning. And we're going to be teaching today on labels. You want to open in prayer? But I'm going to open in prayer, dear. Amen. So everyone, please uh, bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be here in your presence, Lord, in the presence of these families, these marriages, Lord, and Uh, those that are aspiring to be married, Father God. We just thank you for all that you're getting ready to do for them and us as well, Lord. We thank you that you allow us to decrease so you may may increase into us, Father God. And speak your word out through us, Lord. Lord, now I ask that you let the words of our heart and the meditations of our, our mind be acceptable in your sight, Father that you anoint our words, Lord, and let it be sweet as honey to the ears of those listening, 
to the ears of those attending and that we be a blessing to a marriage somewhere. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's start. So there we are, labels. And thank you, Hoods. Amen. Thank you, Hoods. Thank you for all you do. Yay. All right. So have you guys ever been to a work event or like a conference or a retreat and they hand these out? These little hello, my name is label. You put your name on it, wear it. Well, um, how many of you have ever made the mistake of then going home and forgetting to take the label off before you wash your shirt? Thank you, amen. And we all know what happens. Um, and you might think, you know, it's made of paper. It'll just dissolve in the wash. But the thing is, that's not true. Somehow, like the churning and the swirling of the washing machine and like the soap and water mixing with that glue well, that harmless little paper label has not only not dissolved, but it's become like permanently ingrained in the fabric of your shirt. So pretty much your shirt's basically ruined. And that's just the thing about labels. Now, sometimes we subconsciously or consciously, we choose to take these labels and we wear them. And then after some swirling and churning through life, we find that they can stick like super glue to our very core and they become like ingrained into who we are and they affect every aspect of our life. So throughout life, people are constantly using labels. Mm -hmm. uh, we use them to identify different things. Uh, we also like to stick them uh, on people as well. Uh, I'm not saying don't be discerning about others, uh, but we need to be careful not to judge or have condemnation about people. Um, only God knows the true heart of an individual. Uh, people like to label, uh, uh, like labels. Uh, mm -hmm. They make life, it makes life easier, right? Uh, if a jar says it's poison or a box, you don't want to drink that, do you? Mm -mm. Or eat it? Mm -mm. <laughs> so you leave that alone, right? Amen. That label just saved your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other one, it could be a label on a food package saying gluten-free. That means it's safe for most people to eat mm -hmm. or if they have a stomach issue or something. So, and my health guy over here, Tyrone, he knows all about that. <laughs> my man. So labels help us to quickly uh, make decisions about certain things in, in life and can be good in most situations. They can be, yeah. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, we like to slap labels on people. Mm. And there's where the problem starts. Uh, and labels reduce people to an object. Uh, okay. Instead of a person. So uh, when we label people, we, we reduce them to that object that we associate them with. And now they, don't, they no longer have that self-worth to us because now they're an object that we've pictured in our mind. We have that picture of that label in our mind that they are what we think they are. So because it's easier to label people than it is to love them. Ooh, say that again. That was good. I say it's easier to label than it is to love. Mm. So we're going to work on labels today and work on the love factor. Amen. Because Amen. we get rid of these labels in our life, we can love better. Amen. Amen. And see, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, little, a little soulful in my upbringing. Uh, and, and I didn't start out in church. So y'all got to help me out up here and, and make some noise sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Give me some of that. It's That's what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't stop the negative comments from coming from other people. Or even prevent the negative labels from being put on you. But you can choose to remove them Amen. before they become part of who you are. I said, you can remove those labels before they become part of who you are. Amen. Amen. All right? Because 
this can be damaging Amen. throughout our life. Uh, <clears throat> Walt Disney, my wife's favorite. Disney. In case you didn't know, in there. my wife's okay. a Disney Walt file. Disney. <clears throat> That's her label. <laughs> but Walt was told by his instructors that he had lacked imagination. <laughs> and he, he was fired from a job. Yeah, he wasn't creative. And he wasn't creative. Uh-uh. Um, same thing with uh, Oprah Winfrey. Told her she couldn't act. She lacked acting. She was too ugly for television. Okay, but we all know what Oprah is now, right? She's a household name. Yeah, she became famous because why? She ripped that label off that everyone put on her, mm-hmm. Amen. and she knew who she was in Christ. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about labels, and we go right back to even Steven Spielberg <clears throat> was uh, rejected from the theater school, film school. Three times. Three times. He, wasn't, he didn't have any talent. But who is he now? We all know him, right? Okay. What about Michael Jordan? He was cut, right? Cut from his uh, varsity basketball team because he had JV skills, supposedly. Mm-hmm. He lacked that the label. Talent. Right? He lacked the talent. But we all know who. He's a household name, too. We wear his shoes. We got his clothing. But his label was taken off because he knew who he was in Christ. Amen. So labels. Now, they are one of Satan's favorite tricks. He loves to put labels on us. Why? To keep us from reaching our highest potential. Because Satan, he doesn't fight you for where you are. He fights you for where you're going. Amen. Let me say that again. Was, Come on, somebody. Yes. Satan. He's Come Satan, on, girl. So he doesn't fight you for where you are today, who you are. He fights you for where you're going. Amen. See, the devil knows. He knows that God has amazing, amazing things for your future. So he'll try to discourage you, intimidate you, make you feel inferior, and keep you absolutely frozen in bondage so that you can't progress forward. Now, these wrong labels, they can keep you from your destiny. So... Don't allow one negative comment you heard years ago in your childhood. Don't allow that to hold you back. And many people, we just don't know any better. We wear these negative labels like they're the truth. But see, underneath every negative label, there's a hurt soul, somebody longing for healing and longing for freedom. Oh, so freedom. Freedom <laughs> to be set free. Now, we're here to tell you, you we don't have to live that way. These labels that attempt to define us, if they were either stuck there by life circumstances, stuck there by your struggles, misinformed people, or even sometimes by ourselves, they are not permanent. The labels and mistakes of our past, they do not determine our future. Amen. And we need to remember that. Can you say that one again? The labels and mistakes, labels and mistakes of our past, they do not determine our future. And we need to remember that we are not who people say we are. We are who God says we are. Come on, baby. So Come in on, John, baby. John 10.10, 10, Jesus himself said that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that they may have life mm. and have it abundantly. Wow. Abundantly. So, More exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or imagine, and that even type here, of life. Jesus is telling us <laughs> this is what Satan's doing. He comes to steal and kill and, and destroy. destroy. And boy, does he love those labels. Oh, my Loves God. Them. Some labels aren't necessarily bad, though. Yeah, true. I have a label called I'm a car geek. Car geek. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it does apply to me because I love cars. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I was born and raised around cars. I work on them, I build them, Uh, I like to consider them when I'm doing them, you know, uh, rolling artwork, that's what I call it, that's my canvas, so I I label that myself, that's cool, some people are jocks, some people are into sports, I'm into sports, I love them, can't play them now, but I love them, (laughs) (laughs) one day I will again, 
So I, I'm, I'm peeling off those layers of I can't and saying I can. Amen. Because I am. Amen. You got, you got to hear me now. You got to hear me. I am somebody. Amen. I am all that Christ says I can be. Oh, that's a good label. That's a great I'll label. I'll take that one. And we're just getting started because I, I'm not going to get sidetracked. I'm going to read what we wrote because <laughs> we can. it's good. It's really good yeah, it's because I could get. I can get wound up here, get started up, be like Doretha, and get going because that's when she stands up. Look out. I may even Look stand out. today. I it's may getting ready to roll. Stand. <laughs> but today, we're discussing negative labels that can affect our lives in a bad way. How many have had a label placed upon your life that had a negative impact yet to this day? Can you raise your hand? Every Don't be afraid. We ain't judging nobody Amen. in here because everybody someday, some way throughout your life, you've had a label placed on you that subliminally placed a negative thought deep down inside of you. And today we're going to peel those labels off and explore the heart of God Amen. Who we are. even more who and who truly we are. truly are in him. Okay. Because it's been paid with a price. Amen. Ultimate price. It's ultimate. <laughs> and we don't have to reinvent. We don't have to do anything but accept. So those negative labels that were placed on our life, don't give us an excuse to label other people either. Mm-hmm. Or put something on them that, they, that God doesn't want us to do. Amen. But here's some examples uh, that I've heard or I've spoke uh, my grandpa was an angry man. My daddy was an angry man. I'm an angry man. I've stuck that label on. Okay? It sounds like a generational curse. Though. Yeah. Uh, my wife, past wife or whatever, uh, <laughs> you're... <laughs> Former spouse. You wrestle with addiction. <laughs> you know, it's just part of me. It's a label, right? Or my mom or dad treated me like trash. My wife treated me like trash. So therefore, I think I'm trash. Mm, It's a negative label. But that's not who I am. Amen. So we assume that what has always been will always be. But we willingly adopt these labels that come with struggles, Mm -hmm. anger, Loser, trash, addicted person, uh, hater. You got hater hate in your heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we believe our labels. We are more vulnerable to the temptations then because of our belief system, right. our negative belief system now, because that's something that's created. That's not what God made us to be. It's something we've created from society. So... We just want to, uh, to know who we are and who I am. Everybody say, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am somebody. I am somebody. I am a child of the most high God. Child of the most high God. You got to believe that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God made us perfect. Made us beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm getting it's getting under my skin. It's getting hot up here, y'all. Oh Lord, all right, I got it, man. <laughs> okay, I got. Okay. Woo. So what dang, <laughs> that girl's something else. Keeping it real. <laughs> Speak it, girl. You're getting, you're, you're, so, I love it. <laughs> so what Ken's saying is, when we believe our negative labels, we are more vulnerable to temptation, and it goes something like this: I've always been a slave to porn. It's just who I am. Right? I might as well just keep giving into it. Just keep living this way. Or I've always been a nervous person. I can't help it. Right. I was born that way. God made me that way. Well, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Big old right? lie. I'm always going to be this way. Might as well learn to live with it. That's a lie, an absolute lie. Because the solid, firm, biblical oh, reality is that we are not our labels. In Galatians 2.20... 
Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. Christ who lives in me. Lives. See, when Paul said he had been crucified with Christ, he meant that this old, sinfully enslaved, wicked man, he had been killed. It was crucified with Christ, and it died, and everything that went with it. So when his old self died, all those labels that went along with his old self, they also died. Because Paul was a violent man, but that violent label, that was nailed to the cross. Mm. He was also self-righteous. That self-righteous label, that was nailed to the cross as well. And then for Paul, after he was saved, there was only one label that mattered. Christ lives in me. I yeah. am Christ who lives in me. That I reality am. defined who he was. And that old label, Saul, he had been crucified with Christ. The new Paul, he had only one label. Christ lives in me. Amen. And this is the that same I for am. all of us. Our old self was crucified with Christ. And now Christ himself lives in us. Yeah. And we are not ultimately defined by our struggles. We are defined only by our union with Jesus Christ. Mm. And our old self with all the labels, that's dead and buried. Yes. It's gone. Those old labels, they don't apply to us anymore. And we may still struggle with the same temptations, but the difference is those temptations, they no longer define our identity. We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. And period. That's our identity. Christ is in me. Christ, that's it. He's in and me. all those old labels, you. all those old labels that we were struggling with, living with under the burden, well, they can go to hell. And I mean that literally. Literally. Amen. It's where they belong. <laughs> now, there may be times when it feels like we will never change, like we'll always be angry, have an eating disorder, give in to lust, give in to worry. Yes. But God's reality, that must always trump our perceived reality because we are not the same. Because right. Christ lives in us. But the attacks we, come. But attacks still come. Absolutely. Attacks do come. God didn't say that and our you gotta be ready. Be perfect, but yeah. You got to know that I am somebody. Even when those attacks come. Go ahead. Because your new label, it says, Christ lives in me. He lives in me. So every day we must live our new lives. We are a new creation. We are a new creature. We are washed whiter than snow. The Bible says all these things. Mm -hmm. So that means the old man is no longer. No longer. Whiter than snow. I'm a new creation. So when anger pops this ugly head up, that belongs to the old man. It don't belong to Kenyatta now. That does not belong on me. Mm -hmm. That's the old man. It's old label. I done old tore that label man. off and threw it away. I don't want that. I'm not going to wear that. I don't accept that. Amen. I don't accept that addiction anymore. I don't accept that lust any longer. Amen. I don't accept anything that's not of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I am a child of the most high God. That means I can live an abundant life. Amen. I can be blessed. I can learn. I can do whatever I need to do. I can step out and walk in faith and know that God's going to do what he said he would do because his word never returns to me void. Amen. My Lord is a Even good labels. Lord. That's so those point. labels that people have stuck on me throughout my life, I rip them off. I throw them down and say, I'm a blessed man. I can do all things. All Somebody things. say all things. All things. All things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen. I can walk and never be weary. Amen. I can run <laughs> and not be weak. <laughs> Come on. I'm a child of the most high God, people. Amen. I don't care what they said about me. I'm Kenyatta Goins. Amen. Pastor G. Amen. You can't hold me down. Amen. You can't hold me back. My God is a good God. All the time. A mighty God. All the time. He ain't no punk. No, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Because God is a good God. I know what he done for me. Amen. I know the labels that was put on me. Thank you, Jesus. I know that he took them off of me. I know that he blessed my life. He blessed me with a good wife. A wonderful wife. A beautiful wife. A beautiful life. I know that I've torn those off, I've taken those off, and I stepped out of the Amen. darkness. Amen. I stepped out of it. 
I stepped out of the drug world. I stepped out of being a whore man. I stepped out of being a pimp. I stepped out and walked by faith and not by sight. I held the hand of Jesus when he talked to me and told me what to do and where to go, how to do it. Avoid this. They're coming after you. Get out of there right now. Amen. Yes. Yes, my God spoke to me. Yes, he did it because I tore off them old labels. I don't believe that old man lie. lie. I'm a new creation. Amen. I'm a child of the most high God. Amen. I am somebody. Amen. I am somebody. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. New person. The old life, the old life is gone. gone. Dead and a new life has what? It has begun. Come on, Michael. It's begun. A new life has begun for Kenyatta Goins, for you, for you, for you, for you. For Amen. you, a new Amen. life. Amen. A new life. So walk in that. Walk in that life. Woo. Don't be. Ah, Lord Jesus. Thank you. If you need it. Whoa. I'm getting. I'm getting going here. So God is so Amen. good. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Amen. If you only knew. And everybody's got a story. Everybody's been through something. Amen. Everybody. You should wake up every day thanking Him for every little thing. For even the lack. Lord, I thank you that, that you're going to take care of this lack in my life. Mm-hmm. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the doors opening for me that have been closed. I thank you for closing the doors that need to be closed. Amen. I thank you for that woman that left me so I could be blessed with this one. Amen. I thank you for that child you gave me, Lord. I thank you for this house you gave me. I thank you for this raggedy car right now. I know you're going to give me abundance, Lord, and give me something new. Amen. I Amen. know this. I believe this thing. I'm not talking to you because I don't believe what I'm saying. I'm talking to you because I live it. Amen. When they tell me I never walk again, what am I doing here? I'm walking. I can run if I want to. Somewhat. (laughs) Somewhat. But I can do it. I ain't giving up because I know one day I will. Because I am. I am somebody. I ripped them off. I ripped them off. Amen. I ain't believing that. Amen. I ain't believing Amen. that. Woo! Y'all had me started over here. <laughs> I, y'all had me started. I had some labels on me as a child when I went to school that the teacher told me that you'll never be amount to nothing. You'll never amount to anything. You people can't do anything. How old are you? I was eight years old when this eight happened. Eight years old. And they put me outside of the classroom, my desk and my chair, outside in the hallway. Separated me from the rest of the kids. And told me I was too dumb to learn. Mm. Too dumb. It's a hard label. It's a hard label. It's a real negative Took me label. over 40 years to drop that label off of my life. Mm. And how many know that a, a couple months, a month ago, right? Last month. I graduated with my master's degree. I'm writing my first book right now. Amen. But I'm too dumb. If I lived with that label, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accomplish nothing. But my God, my God that lives in me, he told me what I could do. Amen. He blessed me with a wife that could encourage me and lift me up. You can do it. You're, I love you. You're a wonderful man. Encourage me every day. Speak new life into the new man. New labels. New labels on my life were placed on because of this angel right here. You see, we got to be proud of our spouses because God gives you and puts in your life what you need, when you need it, how you need it. Amen. Yeah, you're going to go through stuff. Yes. You got to go through something, right? Because uh, Psalms 23 tells us, yea, though I walk through. through. He didn't tell me I'm staying there. (laughs) It's fleeting. He didn't say I got to stay there. He told me I'm going to go through it. Kenyatta, you're going to go through it. Roberta, you're going to go through it. Amen. Michael, Charles, Kenneth Fleming, you're going to go through something. 
You ain't staying there in that hospital bed. Mm-mm. You're going to walk. You're going to run. Yeah, you're not Because you that. are somebody. Ooh, I'm going to sit down and turn this over to my wife. <laughs> I got one more scripture, though. You do have <laughs> You, you, y'all, y'all get, I, man, I love the Bible. I love the word because you got to listen to one word in there that through. You see, words have meanings. Labels have meanings. So what's your label going to read? Amen. Are you ready to rename that label? Today's Amen. your day. Because Satan doesn't want your marriage to be blessed. Satan Amen. wants to divide and conquer. Steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. Absolutely. So does he want you in a happy marriage? Does he want you in a successful nope. marriage? No. Does he want you living your life for your husband, your spouse, holding him up when he's down in a dark spot and he doesn't know how to get out of it? Because depression's a thing. Mm-hmm. Depression's something else. And here's uh, the thing with labels that are put on you in childhood. Ken just said eight years old. Eight. So what Satan wants is that scared little eight-year-old boy sitting in the hallway, separated from the rest of his classmates by a woman who's probably hurting herself, and slap this label on him. So subconsciously, he took that. And for over 40 years, he lived that. He lived that lie. He believed he couldn't, so he didn't. And then when he started a new life and realized, wait a minute, I do not accept this label. I am smart. I am intelligent. I am capable. I can do this. And he ripped that label off. And And I got all A's. And sometimes (laughs) it's true. And it's all because, but he was burdened and held down by those chains, eight years old. So see, these things happen to us in childhood, and they just keep us in bondage. And that's why we're so passionate about this message today, because we need to be free. And got to get free. These old labels that come on us, a lot of it is, yes, we are new creation in Christ. So So, Philippians 4.13, I stood on this. I stood on this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I was weak, when I was in my dark spot, when I was all alone, I had nothing. I was broke, busted, disgusted. I I leaned on this Philippians. I lived this thing because I knew of what he spoke to me. I can do all things. 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 Amen. Through who? Through Christ. Through who? Through Christ. Amen. Well, that's your new label. I am Christ who lives in me. I am Christ who lives in me. Amen. See, and we don't have to figure it all out. All that God asks us to do is just believe and trust him. Jesus himself said that if you can believe, all things are possible. To him who believes. That's Mark 9.23. So that's what we're here to tell you. Like, it's not some magic formula. You just have to believe. You don't have to be burned by your old labels. And you are not an accident. God designed you perfectly and precisely for that race that's laid before you. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully Because God has an assignment on your life that nobody else can fulfill like you can. You are unique in every way. Your smile, your passion, your talents, everything that you do, the way you speak, the way you affect people, that's so unique. God yes. gave you that. You're not yes. average in every any way I'm at all. I'm my own person. He made me special. He made you absolutely special. You're the apple of his me. eye. You are the apple of God's eye. I'm created in whose likeness? God's likeness and image. Oh, my God. Amen. I'm created in the... A wonderful likeness. And there's nothing ordinary about you. Psalms 139, uh, uh, three, three, uh, 139, 14 says, see, I talk too much. <laughs> yeah, we're good, we're good. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Your works are wonderful. Your works are wonderful. He's talking to God. He's talk, David's talking to God. I know that full and well. I know this. Mm-hmm. See, Amen. you got to know what you need to know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. I need to know that I know that I am made fearfully and wonderfully. I'm not made a mistake. I'm not ugly. No, you're perfect. You're perfect. God made you perfect. God made me the way Amen. he needed me to be and who he needed me to be. I've had Amen. to go through some stuff 
so I could go through that refining process to be up here to talk to you. Amen. To bless you. Because if I hadn't gone through, I couldn't help you. Amen. So today, we are going to get rid of these negative labels. We're going to remove them once and for all, and we are going to literally shred them. We're going to shred them to pieces. Amen. So D, pretty soon her, I'll need a wireless mic. But before we do that, I want to show some old labels Yes. that Ken and I have been, people have tried and attempted to put on us. Mostly in childhood, this is where these negative labels usually come from, childhood. So we're going to stand up here, show you some of our labels that have been tried to put upon us, and then we're going to show you what you can do with these old, negative, stinking, thinking labels. We're getting rid of stinking thinking today. Amen? We're getting rid of what? Stinking thinking. Here's some labels for you to see. All right, so now follow with us, and Josh, if you'll follow, pan over. We're going to show you what to do with these old labels. Yes, this is, uh, this is where we break the chains of the old man. Too close to the mic. to be your old labels. You don't have to be what people called you. You don't have to be what happened to you in your childhood through no fault of your own. You don't have to live under these burdens, these chains anymore. God set us free. We are free indeed. Let it go. Done. Now once we shred these old labels, guess what we can do? We can give ourselves a new label. Ken and I came up with these earlier. His says, hello, my name is blessed and highly favored. And he's wearing that. Mine says, hello, my name is redeemed. I am truly redeemed. Thank you, babe. And I will proudly wear this. This is our new labels. This is what God says we are. So as we break for our table discussion... Um, we do have a question, obviously, to discuss. What are some old negative labels that have been stuck on you that you need to remove? And during your table discussion, we're going to leave this station open. Feel free to come up, write some of those old, nasty, negative, stinking, thinking, Satan-inspired labels and shred them. Just put them through. Say a prayer. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done living under this burden. And then if you want to, we got brand new labels for you to write what you truly are and then wear it proudly. Amen.
I hope somebody was inspired by that today. And we pray that we've been a blessing to you that are watching on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Periscope, wherever you're at in the part of the world you're in. Uh, we just thank you for joining. And we, again, invite you to Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona, uh, to come on down and hear our wonderful pastors. Come to our class and then go and get some food in, in the sanctuary uh, from our lead pastors, Scott and Jason Anderson, mighty men of God doing great things in the kingdom. So we just thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week because we got to go to another part of our class that eh, you got to be here to get at that. So come on down. God bless you. May his best be yours. So discuss amongst yourselves, and we'll come back in about 10, 15, and we'll talk together again. And don't forget to shred, shred, shred.
Well, okay. um, it sounds like everybody's in Side deep discussion. This is a good <laughs> table talk today. Everybody's in deep discussion over here. Man. Don't forget, we got the shredder over here. We've got some markers. we got paper. Uh, Get your new but label. we ain't going to walk it to your table for you because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process that you got to go through. Get All up right? at your so leisure. Get up and shred. Want. We Do got it. a little more time uh, because we want to hear from you. We want to hear... About the labels that's been placed on your life. Which table wants to go first? Anybody got a good word? Hey. Uh oh. Charles wanted to get up there first. <laughs> All right. We always get something good from them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, I remember as a little girl uh, listening to the conversations, uh, ladies that would come and talk to my mother because my parents were pastors for 60 years. Mm. And I remember my mother always had, you know, women, you know, that he, she was. Uh, praying with or talking, and I remember in their conversations, they would say things like, but they're just girls, you know, they're going to get married, and basically, that's it, mm. like, they're not going to be anything, and inside of me, I, I, I had the privilege that I, I can say that I had a lot of great teachers, you know, in my school years, when I was little, I was young, and I had this desire. I wanted to do something, you know. I even knew the university that I wanted to go to, you know, and everything was born and raised in Mexico. Right. Well, I was 16 years old when my parents said, you know, we don't have any more money. Uh, you guys are going to go to the States with your sister, you know, and you guys are going to go to work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they brought us here. I remember it was in the summer and at the end of my 10th grade in Mexico, came here in the summer, so... When the school year started, I asked my sister, when am I going to start school again? She's like, no, you came here to work. Right. Oh, gosh, that was like <laughs> so horrible. Yes. She got me a job and started working and then doing things. But inside of my heart, I always remember my dad's words. He always preached to the church, and he always talked to us at the table over dinner. When we pray, he said, you are the daughter of a king. Oh, Amen. Amen. Label, and I remember the really jobs that I had as a nanny, as a factory worker, working with old guys in a nasty environment, yes. you know, people offering us drugs and stuff like that. Uh, young, uh, naive, <laughs> you know, uh, those labels. And uh, without parents, my parents stayed in Mexico, you know, trying to defend ourselves and the world. I put my head down, and I gave my, uh, my life to God, and I said, I'm going to go be what I want to be, what I believe Come I on, can sister. be, Amen. and prove to anybody that being a woman <laughs> shouldn't be a label, right? Amen. right? I went and put myself through school. I went to Phoenix College, got my GD in two days. Yes. They, have, they tested me in two days, five exams, and they sent me to my graduation All right. instead of to my placement <laughs> class. So I graduated Amen. from high school in two years and two days. Went to ASU, got two degrees, went to a private university, got another degree, owned three businesses, and then God yeah. said, okay, you've been good, so I'll send you a nice husband. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charles. <laughs> you know, so that was my biggest label, you are a woman, you know, Amen. and you are the child of the most high God. That's who we are. It has Child nothing to be a woman, a man, Mexican. I mean, I mean it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. right? Doesn't matter. So God is great. God doesn't see colors or nationalities. Amen. Yes. Amen. A child of the king. That's a right. A child of the king. Most high God. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Charles. Um, I, I can recall a time, and um, I, I was sitting there just thinking about the burden that uh, I carried around with me for a very, very long time when my parents separated because my parents were never married but when my parents separated I remember and I know she meant this in a loving way but it was a something that I carried with me for 40 years when my mom and dad separated my grandmother was talking to my mother and she looked at me 
and she said to my mother, she said, you see that boy right there? My dad's name was Charles, so she called him Charlie. She said, you see that boy right there? If you leave Charlie, that boy is going to be nothing but trouble. He's going to grow up. He's going to be in jail. He's going to have babies everywhere. Man. He's going to be looting, shooting, killing. Right. He ain't going to be blank. He's going to be the biggest burden to you. You better stay with Charlie, who was abusive. Well, my mother said this to me. She said, baby, you know what your grandmother said? She said that if I leave your dad, you're not going to be nothing but a burden to me. So this is what I want you to do. Every night, I want you to pray that you not be a burden to me. That was a label that I allowed to be placed on me and on my life. So every night, I pray that I don't be a burden to my mother. So let me tell you what that label did. I didn't take chances. I didn't let it rip. I held back. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I was not being the creature that God created because this burden that I said, no, I'm not going to do this because if I do this, then I'm a burden. It's going to make my mother look bad. It's going to make my sisters look bad. And my grandmother's going to say, I told you. So I I realized this, you know, through the grace of God that um, there's this ugly word called bitterness Mm. that pops up. And, you know, we think that bitterness means mad or angry. Yeah, that's one of them. But bitterness is a wounded spirit, a sense of loss, a betrayal, an anger, a fear. It's also an avoidance. So because I was dealing with this bitterness, I was avoiding taking chances. Yeah. My spirit was wounded for being the success that God wanted me to be in my life. Mm. I felt abandoned because as opposed to she supported me, she placed a label. And I'm not saying this is anything against anyone, but it's what I allowed. And the moment I recognized that who I am in Christ Jesus became liberating. It became freedom. And then as a result, you know, my wife and I, we live an amazing life as a result of just being free. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That was a good word. So he ripped off that label. Ripped it off. He ripped off that label of burden. But see, in childhood. And that bitterness freed him. Now, people speak things on us, and really, they don't mean to. I believe in my heart his grandmother wasn't trying to hurt him. She was just doing what she knew best to keep the family together, right? But these words, as a child, all he heard was burden, and he carried that with him. Yeah. That's what we're saying, these negative labels. Okay. <laughs> um, my whole life I've been told I've been mentally ill. I wrote death poetry. I wrote how I was a failure and how I was never going to amount to anything. I failed student teaching. I failed. I had nervous breakdowns. I have a failed marriage. I have five children. I reinvented myself um, 15 years ago. I, because of all the abuse that I had gone through, I decided I was going to change my name. I changed my birth certificate and my driver's license, and I became a different person. And um, that didn't work because <laughs> you can't escape your past. You have to face things. You have to go through things, and you have to know who you are in Christ. And I am a worshiper. That's who I am. I am a wonderful woman of God. I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. I am Come redeemed. I am, for, I, am, I am totally forgiven and forgotten, yes. and I am going forward in Jesus' name. Jesus. And I am returning back to my birth name with my driver's license, my birth certificate, and my Amen. social security. I am going to stand and be the true person who I am. I'm not running away from my past or from myself. I'm facing myself, and I am enough, and I am a daughter of the king, and I am not abused. I am not. I am redeemed. I am loved. I am forgiven, Yes. and I am prosperous, and it is a miracle that I'm not homeless, that I am not in a shelter, that I'm not mentally ill, because it was God that 
took my mind and gave me the mind of Christ that I can stand here and look at people when I was molested by boys and girls growing up and I had no self-esteem. So praise the Lord. Devil's a liar. (laughs) Lord, thank you. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Devil's a liar. Amen. We plead the blood over everybody. Well, amen. I, I, I really enjoyed the uh, message today. Uh, labels, Thank right? You, amen. Very, labels. very strong. So I just think about labels for myself. Growing up, we grew up very poor. So uh, I remember in eighth grade, I was actually had a really good friend, and uh, they were middle class, but they were pretty well off. And I was actually wearing his clothes to school. Yeah. Ah. So you know, your your friends making fun of you, calling you names. It was a label that I carried with me for a long time. Right, a very long time. I mean, I think this is really a great lesson in regards to shedding labels, uh, understanding who your true identity is. Because what happens when you, when you unknowingly allow those labels to restrict you, you're never, never able to reach your true potential, right? Which right. God has for us all. But like you were saying, even like you know, with your, with the, uh, you know, with the, with the labels that you had from when you're a kid, right? Yes. Being able now to graduate, write write in the book, uh, things like that. Yes. Those are things, right, that would, those labels would have kept you from living your God-given purpose, right? Yes. So I just want to kind of say, I just I really enjoyed this message today. Thank you. But uh, I think it's, it's important for us all to identify those labels that we have that is actually capping God's potential in our life. Amen. That's wonderful. And that's the reason we have the labels up here now. Because there's something, there's a transference that goes forth when you write it out. Don't hold back today. There's a transference that takes place when you write something out and you make it plain. Mm -hmm. That you put a new vision on your life. You speak the word into you, not your past speaking it into you. Because you are a new creation. You are somebody. So we've got labels over here. We've got markers. We've got a shredder. You got something you need to shred? Write it down. Make it plain so you can run with it. Habakkuk 2.22 says that. It's about writing your plans down, writing your, your, your vision down, writing it all down. It says without a vision, people perish. You know, we talked before about the book, and Charles created a book that he carries with him. You know, I, I told him about my vision board. You know, so the more we write things down and more and we shred things, we let go of things because some of us will harbor stuff for years. And we don't even know we're harboring stuff, but it pops up in all of our relationships and our jobs. It pops up with our kids. And then we create a generational situation that we continue to pass on. So we're choosing today. To be a blessing. Break the cycle. Breaking the cycle. Break the we're we're, we're going to have our children highly blessed and highly favored. Amen. We are redeemed. Mm-hmm. We're no longer a curse where we're a blessing. We got one more couple over here. Just me. Um, no, it's you and your, your husband. Amen. Regardless of what you may be going through, you don't speak for you. You speak for us. Amen? Amen. And so he can get it right. Because sometimes we're going through things and we, we speak in we instead of us. Y'all need to hear this. What I'm trying to tell you is we can't be we. We have to be us. God united us. And we're going to go through things. But we're going to come out better than we went in. All right. Come on, baby. Speak to me. I have been dealing with labels my whole life since before. Pick the mic up to you. I have been dealing with labels since before I was born, when I was in my mother's stomach of her not wanting me. Finding out I was supposed to be given up for adoption, but then she changed her mind last minute and kept me, which I wish she didn't do. I was raised by my grandmother and my aunt and almost every generation of my family, but I never felt like I belonged. I was told that I would never be as smart as my mother. I would grow up to ruin my life like my mother. I would have different baby daddies like my mother, which I have two. Two, one, I married them both. 
the first time I did it because I felt like I had to. I owed it to my daughter. And he told me I would never be anything without him. He told me that I would never amount to anything, that nobody would ever love me. My mother told me the same thing. And even currently, I still have those same labels of nobody's going to want you. You're going to destroy your life. You can't amount to nothing. You can't own a successful business. You can't do this. You have to do this in order to do what's right for your family. You have to do this because this is what's right, not what you want to do because that's selfish. And I'm, not, I'm being told that by people who aren't related to me. I'm being told that everything I do is wrong by a family I'm married into and by my own blood family. I don't feel encouraged, I don't feel supported, and I don't know how to be a wife, as I was told. I'm not a wife, I'm not a mother, I'm not a woman, and I don't know how to be those things. And I've been growing up hearing that I would never be able to be those things. So everybody is making it through their labels, I'm not. Well, that's what we're here for. Because you have to start somewhere, and the first step is acknowledging is acknowledging these yes. labels that were put on you from no from you didn't do anything to get these labels put on you that's just what people mm. do because hurting people hurt people and sometimes they don't know any better themselves so the first step is to forgive these people that put labels on you because they yeah. don't know any better they're just hurting themselves and the then you need to realize who you are in yeah. Christ who does Christ say you are go to the bible every time you got to believe that word of God. That Bible is our roadmap to yeah. success. Yes. It's our it's our love token that God gave to us, inspired word to bless us. Amen. To walk by, to listen to, to read. And each time you read one single scripture, people, you can pick one scripture out and you read it tomorrow and it says something totally different to your spirit. Right. So you've got to read that word, stand on that word, and know that you are somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know that you are a child of God. Amen. I, I've known you for years. You were my secretary. She, she was my secretary when she was in high school. <laughs> but you are, a, you, you are a blessing. Amen. You are somebody. You are a queen. Mm -hmm. yep. Your Amen. husband will be the man you need him to be. Amen. You will be the wife he needs you to be. You, you will be that mother because you are somebody. Amen. Can you say I am? Say you it. I am. I am, I am somebody. You got to start speaking over your life victory. Amen. Victory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Speak it. Speak it. We got you. Uh. Yeah, I'd like to just share a scripture that you shared with us during your teaching and give you a, kind of a different perspective on it. You taught 2 Corinthians verse, or chapter 5, verse 17. 17 yeah. Therefore, 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 if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Are you Any, in Christ? Anyone. Yes. The answer is yes. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things, all things have become new. Oh. Now, the that. new perspective in it, in this teaching, D and I were taught this years ago. Your past has no future. Hey, Listen man. to that. Your past has no future. That's what that scripture says. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So your past has no future. Your past has no future. You know, we would love to keep going. Because this is, this is so good. We got one more couple. One more couple. So when I grew up, my moms used to say something. I mean, from the time I could comprehend and understand what she was saying, but she would get upset with the children, and she would say, you all about as dumb as cat. Yep, wow. yep. Heard and that. so I was like, okay. 
So I was about 16, 17 years old, and she said it again, you know, as she always would. And I was able to analyze it at that point in my life. And I said, Moms, when the cat does that, and that's left there on that ground, it's right there. It's dead. Can you explain to me how? And I didn't know the Lord at this point, but he was coming. And I said, <laughs> explain to me, moms. I think he was already there, Mike. And, and, I, and, and we challenged, I challenged my moms and her words. That's what you all have to do with this enemy of our faith. Amen. You got to confront the devil, get right in his face, and call him a lie. Amen. Because it has no standings. It's nothing but words. You know that old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, words. will never harm me. And that's we a probably lie. all, that's a lie out of the pit of <laughs> hell. And the only way to confront that devil is by the word. So in Amen. Romans, I love this scripture. In Romans, y'all read this scripture. And you read this scripture, Romans 6, read it in its entirety. But at the verse of 13, it starts. Neither yield your bodies, your members, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. We got a lot of people in our lives, human beings. The only way the devil can do his work is use bodies. Amen. He needs people to speak his lies. Yes. He needs people to do his business. <laughs> Just his like our Heavenly Amen. Father. We are the church, the people. Our yes. bodies are the temple. Yes. So. That's right. The devil gets to use you or God gets to use you. It's our choice. <laughs> I'm going to be choosing. I'm choosing to be used by the Lord. I want Jesus to use me. So in the name of Jesus, I bind up every broken spirit that the devil comes to kill, yes. steal, and destroy. But Bind Jesus said he came that we might have life and, and have abundantly. it more. More. That's a, we on. are more, more than conquerors. Yes. See there, I know what it means. Woo. So I stand in the boldness that Jesus has given me. Yeah, he says come boldly. And we just move forward come in on. it. Yes. We was, this, me and this brother, was, if Lord. you just take the word, forget take man's word. philosophy. Yes. Take it off the pages <laughs> and apply it to your life. Oh. It's easy. Come on. It's, it's easy if you just do the word. Amen. Ooh, hey, hey. <laughs> do the word. Yes. Hey. That's all we need to do in right. Jesus' name. Oh, do the word. <laughs> do the word. Everybody, do the word. Come on, everybody. Come on. Do the word. Do the word. Do the word. Amen. We Amen. We got to wrap it up, y'all. Woo. But hey, 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 listen, 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 listen to me good. Listen to me real good. Don't get this class mixed up with where your food is. Go to the service. All right. Don't get this class. This is a class. This is not. This is not service. You need to go in to service now with Pastor Jason, Pastor Scott. And get your full on, because we just getting it started. This is the warm up. This is the warm up exercise. So let's the go on appetizer. in there and get the real stuff. Get let's get that workout all the way on. Let's get that word. Receive that word of God that's coming from them. And major things, major things Amen. are about to happen. Amen. About to happen in the sanctuary. Don't let. Don't be out there hanging out, talking, running your lips. Get into the sanctuary. Because this is a class. We need you in there to worship God. Take this Holy Spirit with you in there and worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Let's Let's do it. it. I want want the whole team in there. Y'all need to sit up up front with us. Come on down there. Let's fill up the front end of the church. Let's not sit in the back hiding. Come on. Let's go down there and receive it. Amen. Let's receive it today. In the name of Jesus, champion marriage is on the roll. Let's roll it. Because this church is a, it's a blessing church. Amen. This church is about helping you, lifting you up. So be a part of it. Yep. Be a part of it and receive the fullness that this church has to offer you. It's a mighty church. Don't get me started again, y'all. God, Amen. Good Lord Almighty. Bless y'all. We love you. Please go to the sanctuary.
Sanctuary. We'll meet you in there. Front rows. more than conquerors and that you walk in 